Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church, Chief of Florida. We are grateful to God that you are here this morning. Uh, listen, uh, just if you're, let me let me tell you this. If you're a guest visitor, first second time, we have some great little cups for you on the way out. Uh, in exchange for that, if you'll if you'll fill out the visitor card and just drop it in one of our offering boxes, but on the way out. There should be a cup for you and some information, maybe some candy, who knows what else in there. So grab one of those. And let me just say this to you, okay? I know it's a little warmer in here than normal, all right? We, we've got an air conditioner not working. I'm fully, fully aware. The people in the balcony, it's even going to be hotter. Sorry. Here's what we're going to do, though. We're going to, we will uh, shrink things a little. I see some of y'all already fainting. Need some of those funeral home fainting. <laughs> I was telling Jeff, see, there's not really any time for funny stories this morning, but I'm going to tell one anyway. I was telling Jeff, I said, in South Georgia, they give those to you, but it's not for the heat. It's for the gnats. Yeah. <laughs> those things you love. <clears throat> so, uh, all right, so we're glad you're here. We're going to have our announcements at the end of our service today. I'm going to read some scripture, and when I get done reading our scripture, uh, Mr. Tom Harper is going to come pray a blessing over our watermelon crop. That's why I'm wearing this shirt this morning. I uh, felt a little betrayed in the first service. Uh, someone unnamed, Jake Sash, uh, was, was supposed to wear his shirt that matches this. And then apparently Tiffany dresses him. And you're free to tell them all of this. I got here and I looked at her and she's like, oh no, I forgot. And I thought, well, that was convenient. But anyway, so he prayed in our first service. Uh, for, our, for our watermelons, and, uh, and we're going to ask Tom to pray after I read the scripture in this service. And uh, It's an important part of our community. It's an important part of our culture. And so we want to have a time to bless, bless the farmers and all of that. And, and a little bit about that, too. Uh, obviously, we are very, we're rapidly approaching spring break, which will be fair week. And so last year, what we did, uh, this is a good time to make this announcement, this announcement. Last year, what we did was we just... Put a little money on behalf of our outreach program into one of our local booster groups that helps uh, with uh, with purchasing some of those animals at the fair. We're going to do something a little different this year. We're going to give you a chance to participate. So next Sunday, next Sunday, on your way out, we'll have ushers at the door with the plates, and that will specifically be for um, for those kids that have animals. So we're going to take up a, uh, a collection next Sunday on the way out, wherever you put that in those plates. We'll, we'll take that. We'll divide that equally among all of the First Baptist kids that have um, swan, uh, pigs, goats, and, and steers. Um, and so we'll divide that equally, and it'll be an add-on on each of their animals. We thought that would be the best way. We'll probably still do an outreach uh, the same way we did last year, but we want to give y'all a chance. It's a big deal, right? It's an important thing. Those kids work hard. <clears throat> Trust me, I know. They work hard keeping the, uh, our goats alive, literally. And so, uh, so anyway, we, we want to try to do that. I'm going to read Psalm 121. Uh, We're going to kind of have a little shorter song set this morning because of that. I think it's about 74 in there. Now you know how warm it is. And uh, your body heat's going to make it a little warmer. But uh, let's read from the 121st Psalm, and then Mr. Harper's going to pray for us. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil and he will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. I pray for us, Mr. Harper. <coughs> Father, as we come before you this morning, we come with grateful hearts. Lord, just remembering who you are, the great I am, our creator, our Lord, our God. Lord, as we approach you this morning, we recognizing it is springtime and time for us to get our crops in the ground. We thank you for everything that you do. The 
the way that you set up creation such that we're involved, that we can practice good stewardship, not only of our hearts and souls, but on over the land and the plants and the animals that you've given us. Lord, just pray that you will bless our efforts. For those that are planting their corn and later their peanuts, for those that are planting watermelons right now, Lord, for those that are raising animals for our nourishment and our bodies, Lord, just ask a special blessing on each and every one, individually and family. Lord, and just bless this service today as only you can. For we ask in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Let's all stand and we're going to worship by singing Jesus beside you. Thank you, Lord. God love you.
chapter 22, Genesis chapter 22. While you're making your way there, um, the simple message question of this message is, is what would you sacrifice for God? What wouldn't you sacrifice for God? Excuse me. What wouldn't you sacrifice for God? Now think about this. What is it that, what is it that God would call you to surrender that you'd be unable or unwilling to even consider giving up? Not that you might actually give it up, but what is it in your life that you would be unwilling to say, Lord, you, you, you can't touch this at all? In other words, what are the untouchable things in your life? Can I tell you what, whether that is a relationship, whether that's a, a person, whether that's your, your, your wealth, whether that's some title you have, whatever that might be, I just want to tell you this, those are idols in your life. And this morning we're going to look at a man who sacrificed his life. And as you're, taking, if you're turning your way there to Genesis chapter 22, there's a phrase that's used. It's also used in the, in the text in Hebrews we'll look at. And that phrase is, God tested Abraham. I wonder if you've ever had a hard test. Let me tell you what, I'm going to tell you about a time I was tested. I thought it was going to be a hard test. Turned out to not be a hard test, but... But it, it was uh, when I was preparing for my doctorate of ministry. Some of you know, uh, Brooks just finished his Ph.D. And I have a doctorate of ministry, which is like a professional version of that. And so, in fact, this, this Christmas, uh, you know, I don't know if every now and then you get one of those really awesome Christmas gifts. Not like a mediocre Christmas. Like somebody knocks it out of the park. So this past year, I got a cup from some friends in Atlanta. It's coffee stained. My wife said I should have washed it before I brought it here, but then they'll know I used it. It says, I'm a doctor. It's just not that kind. <laughs> right? So, so I, like, I, I prefer, people ask me every now and then, they'll say, what do you like to be called? And I'll say, I prefer to be called Chris, that's my government name, or pastor. I think pastor is the most, most affirming term in the Bible to refer to the person that I am and what I do. But I'll tell you real quick how I got my name before I tell you about the doctrine. Some of you have heard this story. I was supposed to be a girl. <laughs> I was supposed to be Heather Laura. What a terrible two names put together. If your name's Heather Laura, I apologize. But, but that was going to be my name, Heather Laura. And, and praise the Lord, I was not a girl. And um, I was a boy. And my mother had a lot of difficulties uh, birthing me. She had more difficulties after I was, was born. Uh, she probably... She had so, she was sick for about five days. She was kind of out of it. I didn't have a name. So they came to my dad. Now, keep in mind, we have some good family names. My brother is James Lehman. That's a good name. My dad, which is shocking because he wasn't really this kind of guy, but he looked in the TV guide. <laughs> I'm not making this up. He looked in the TV guy, and Chris Christofferson was on TV that night. And he said, all right, Chris, that's how I got the K. It's not a girl's name. It's Chris Christofferson's name. Rhodes Scholar, Army veteran, helicopter pilot. Anyway, then he looked out the window. I was born in, in uh, Chatham County, Savannah, Georgia. And he looks out the window, and there's an Elliott Drug Stores. And he says, that's it, Chris Elliott. <laughs> Through the years, I said, Dad, like, that's the best you could do. <laughs> like, really, that's the best you could do. So that's how I got my name. I prefer not to be called doctor. I prefer to be called Chris or pastor. But let me tell you about the test. When I finished my doctorate of ministry, I had to write a little thesis. Uh, and so I think it was like a whole thing, 173 pages, uh, counting bibliography. But, I mean, who would keep up with that? <laughs> so I had to go to New Orleans, and I had to defend this thing. And so I, I remember I was so nervous about this test. You were going to have to go in there, and these three professors, you're going to sit there, and you're going to, they're going to ask you all kind of questions about this, and, and they're going to let you leave, and you're going to go out and drink a glass of water and come in. When you come back in, hopefully they're standing, which means you've passed this, what you think is going to be a hard test. And I remember I had labored for years and years and years. I put it off. I thought about quitting. My wife wouldn't let me quit. I mean, she was like, you're going to finish this stupid thing. And so I just wavered along. It literally had been a decade from the beginning to the end. And, uh, and, and so I, I was nervous that morning. I was a little scared. And I went in there. 
Uh, and that test turned out to be not much of anything. It was great and it was easy. In fact, one of those guys, he had a tough day. Uh, he had a, he'd had a church member murdered in the parking lot. He passed through a very rough church in New Orleans. And so uh, I remember Dr. Ken Taylor. And so he didn't say a word through all of this, which will make you a little nervous. And then at the end, he said, got one question. I thought, well, this is it. It's all going down from here. <laughs> he said, hey, uh, I wrote a book. I wrote uh, my little thing was called a, 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 it was a conflict resolution manual for incarcerated believers in the United States Penitentiary in Atlanta, Georgia. That was my little project. And so he says, I'm waiting for it. He says, I got just one question. He says, what's your favorite prison movie? <laughs> and I thought $15,000 in a decade of time and you want to know my favorite prison movie and so they asked I didn't answer that question in the first service and then I was the only thing anybody cared about they didn't care about the sermon and uh, here's what I told him I said look I said doc it's like going to war you don't come home and watch war movies I don't go home and watch prison movies I see it every day. So, so you're going to see in this text, when we stand in a moment in, in uh, Genesis chapter 22, that God tests Abraham. So let's stand in honor of the reading of the Lord's word in Genesis 22. And I'll preach fast and you listen quick. After these things, God tested Abraham. And he said to him, Abraham, he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. And offer him there as a burnt offering on one of these mountains of which I shall tell you. And Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took, took of his young men with him, two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering and arose. And he went to the place of which God had told him. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and he saw the place from afar. And then Abraham said to the young men, stay here with the donkey, and I and, I and the boy will go over there and worship and, you, and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. And so they went, both of them together. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father. And he said, here I am, son. And he said, behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. And when they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there. And he laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar, on top of the wood. And Abraham reached out his hand and he took the knife to slaughter his son. And the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. He said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing that you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and he looked and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and he took the ram and he offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day on the Mount of the Lord, it will be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven. And he said, my, by myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and you've not withheld your son, your only son. I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my name. You've obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they arose, and they went together to Beersheba. And Abram lived in Beersheba. God bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. Five quick things for this morning for you to think about. Now, as you're, as you're hearing all of this, I want you to keep in the background of your mind that here's the story of a man. Here's the story of a man who went up the side of a mountain with the intent of sacrificing his son. In the background of your mind, I want you to think about this. Thousands of years later, a father would send his son up a hill called Calvary to a place called Golgotha. And there wouldn't be a ram caught in the thicket. Instead, 
The Lord Jesus Christ himself would sacrifice his own body and blood for you and for me. And so even in this story of Isaac is the foreshadowing of what the father would do to his very own son. Now let me say this is a hard passage to preach. It is a difficult passage to preach. It gets harder to preach this passage when you have children. And so we, we have struggled with this passage through the years. I will tell you, this passage, you can do a little research if you want, was a lightning rod within the Southern Baptist Convention at one time. There was a guy, a professor at one of our seminaries, he wrote a commentary on this. It was the first edition in the Broadman Commentary set. Some of you may remember the Broadman Commentary set. And in it, he said, this wasn't a real event. He believed it was a psychological episode on behalf of Abraham. And here's what we believe. As tough as it is to get through it, as harsh as it is, as seemingly difficult as it is, it is understand this, it's the word of God. Amen. And we believe it to be absolute truth in spite of the fact that it's hard and it's sad and maybe even as a parent it's excruciating to read. So a few things for you to think about this morning. Five things. One, uh, God called Abraham to a life of surrender. God called Abraham to a life of surrender. Hear these things. Not only does he call in that moment, but he still calls people today. He calls people today to peculiar things. He calls you to live holy in a world that isn't holy. He calls us to particular things. He called he called Abraham in that moment to go and to do what he prepared and was willing to do. Just like he had called him multiple times before. He called him out of the Ur of the Chaldeans. He called him to be faithful to, to this covenant he made with him. He, he called him when, to, to enact the covenant with the, with the foreskin. He called him to some particular things. He called him to some spectacular things. Hear this, Christian. God is still in the business of calling people to particular things, to supernatural things, and to peculiar things. When he calls us, our answer should be, here we are, Lord. And understand this, at times God doesn't tell us why we are called to the task at hand, only that we're called. Could he have told Abraham, Abraham, listen, I got a mission for you. You're going to go, you're going to sacrifice your son. And let me just tell you, thousands of years later, I'm going to sacrifice my own son. He didn't give him all the details of what was planned. God calls us and we don't understand the purpose of it. He's just called us to be faithful. He's called us to surrender who we are to him. And often at times he doesn't even share the purpose of what he's doing among us. We can't even see it sometimes. But here's the best answer. When God calls you to surrender, whatever it is, maybe right now he's calling you to surrender. Surrender your finances, surrender your time, surrender your life, surrender whatever it is. Here's the best answer. Here I am. That's what the Bible records in Genesis chapter 22. It says there that God was going to test Abraham and Abraham's response is, here I am. First question for this morning. When God calls you in a supernatural way to come and to follow him in whatever means. Some of you today don't even know Christ. And maybe you need to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and trust him with your life. Your answer this morning might be, here I am. How about some of you this morning? God might be calling you to who knows what to do in this church some of our young adults, God might be calling you to short-term, long-term missions, some hard ministries. I, I, I told you we need to call out those who are called more often, pastors and preachers and youth ministers. And is the Lord calling you? And your answer should be, here I am. Not, hey, Lord, do you know the plan I have for my life? Hey, Lord, do you know my finances right now? I can't. Squeeze a dime out of my budget. No, our answer should be, here I am. Let me go on quickly. A Abraham was faithful, as usual. Our life, just like Abraham's, should be a legacy of faithfulness. You know what? 
Sadly, sadly, it won't be that many years after your death, they're going to they're gonna stop remembering things about you. <coughs> they are. It won't be that long, and they might, they might forget your favorite food. They might forget your favorite slogan, your motto, the things you were known for. They might even begin to forget your eye color. What, what eye color did Grandma have? I don't know. We got to go look at the pictures. Wait, they're all black and white. We'll never know. <laughs> Here's one thing they'll never forget. They'll never forget that you had a legacy of faithfulness. Amen. For generations and generations and generations, they'll say, he was faithful. To the Lord. She was faithful to the Lord. You know what? All throughout these scriptures, we see how Abraham or Abram is called, and over and over, he matches the calling of God with the faithfulness that he has. Our life should be this our life should be a testimony of faith. Our lives should just be a story of faithfulness. That we're living out for the world to see. As I say, one day, one day, if the Lord tarries, somebody is going to stand and officiate a service for you. If the Lord tarries, and they're going to stand there and they're going to have to say some things. Are they going to be easy things to say? Are they going to say, this person was a good and faithful servant? All throughout the scriptures, it's recorded. Abram, here's a word from God. Hey, Abram, get a U-Haul and move somewhere I've never, you've never seen. Yes, Lord. Hey, Lord. Uh, hey, Abram, look up in the sky. You see all those stars? One day you're going to have descendants, and they're going to be as vast as the stars in the sky. Yes, Lord. Uh, hey, Abram, I want you to enact a covenant with me with this issue of foreskin being the symbol. Yes, Lord. He even goes and bails. By the time we get here, he's bailed Lot out twice. We've seen Sodom and Gomorrah. We've seen a lot go on in Abram's life. And here he is in what's going to be the greatest test of his life. All of, all of that led up to this. And here's his response. Not only here I am, he is a faithful man of God as usual. Is that what they say about you at work? At work, do they say, she's a faithful woman of God? When they see you walk in at Bill's on a Tuesday afternoon, do they say, he is a faithful man of God? Or do they curse you under their breath? Or do they say that you're a hypocrite? What do they say about you? Abram, Abraham was faithful as usual. Here's a third thought for you. Is our calling is a calling of faith. Our calling is a calling of faith. There are people in this room, for whatever reason, you're here today. Maybe you didn't want to be here. Maybe your wife told you if you didn't come to church, we weren't going to be lunch. <laughs> Maybe you came with a guest or a friend. If you're here and you don't know Christ, today may be the day for you to make that right. Our calling is a calling of faith. You're not here today by accident. No one in this room is here by accident. Accidents don't happen in the economy of God. If you're, if you're in a position in your own life where you've never put all of your faith in Christ, I would pray that today, today, this weekend, by the time the sun goes down tonight, by the time you get in a vehicle and leave this campus, that you would hear the calling of God to follow Jesus. Amen. That you would find someone, me, a deacon, Josh, somebody here today. Denny and Brooks aren't here, so you can't talk to them. Somebody, and you'd say, I need to talk following Christ in faith. If you've never done that, I, I, I encourage you, I call you to that kind of life. Our calling is a calling of faith. And then it's not just a calling of following Jesus. In fact, it's not, it's a life that then gets bound up in action. Abraham was more than just a man of faith. He was a man of action. And Abraham was a, was a man not just of faith and of action, but he was a man of 
faithful action. When you get to Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews tells us uh, who the people of faith are in the Old Testament. He, he calls them out. He, he calls them out by name. It's called the roll call of faith. I've referenced it several times. We even referenced it not long ago, earlier in, the, in this whole uh, hall of fame of faith. And this morning, we're going to look at another section of this. In Hebrews chapter 11, this is what the writer says about Abraham. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, here's this word again, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom he said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered some of the writer of Hebrews captures about the faith that Abraham had if he would have killed his son. He says he considered that God was able even to raise him from the dead. From which, figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked future blessings on Jacob and Esau. You see, in the, in the book of, of Hebrews chapter 11, God is recording for us our calling of faith is going to wind up in actions of faith. I'd ask you in the middle of this sermon, are you a person of, of faithful action? Are you doing something with your faith? Here's Abram over and over, Abraham being called to, 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 to rise to the challenge of action, and then he faithfully does it. He says, Lord, if that's what you want me to do, then that's what I'm going to do. I don't understand it. I can't see it. I can't comprehend what you're calling me to do. But I'm going to go and I'm going to do it. Friend, are you a, are you a person of faithful action? Are we seeing action in your life because of your faith? Are you producing fruit, if you will, in your life? Are you serving the church? Are you serving those around you? Are you serving the kingdom? Do you long to see the kingdom grow? Our calling is a calling of faith. How about this? God always provides. God always provides. Here's the moment. The sun is on the altar. The knife is in his hand. He's willing to do whatever God's called him to do. As harsh and hard as it sounds. And then the Lord provides an offering. The Bible records there's a, a, a ram caught in the thicket. You know, I don't know what you showed up today needing. I don't know what you showed up today in your life saying, Lord, you know there's not enough means for tomorrow. Lord, you know this relationship is, is scattered, smothered, broken, cracked. It's everything. Lord, you know my, my kids are spread out. They're unaffiliated with church. Lord, you know, I don't even know if I'm going to have a job in a month. Can I tell you this? God always provides in accordance with his moment and his measure. It isn't what you want. We don't always get what we want, do we? We don't always get what we want. But here's the thing. The Lord always provides for us what we need. And in this moment, you, you, hear, hear, the, the, hear what happens. The Lord, here, here's what he says. He said, do not lay your hand on the board or do anything to it. For now I know that you fear God. Do you fear God? I started this message by asking you, do you, in a sense, fear God enough that you would surrender everything you have? You'd say, all of this isn't mine. Lord, there's nothing in, in my life that should be more valuable than loving you and following you. And so the, it says, the angel of the Lord said to him, from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am. He says, don't lay a hand on the boy. Verse 13, Abraham lifted up his eyes and he looked and behold, behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by his horns and Abraham went and he took the ram and he offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. And then here's what Abraham says. Abraham called the name of the Lord of this place and he said, the Lord will provide. It's where we hear Jehovah Jireh. 
God will always be a God that provides. And it said to this day, on this mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. I'm going to tell you this. He didn't just provide a ram caught in the thicket. Thousands of years later, he provided not a ram, but a Passover lamb. And he came in the form and the fashion of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he did take his own body up a hill called Galvary, called Golgotha. And he, his blood poured out for my sins and your sins and the sins of people from every nation and tongue and tribe. Hear this, friend. God always provides in the form not just of sacrifice for our sins, but he's going to provide for you if you'll have some faith. If you'll have some faith, again, he may not give you everything you want. He will give you what you need in this life and in this world. What, one more thought for you is that there's always a blessing in obedience. Now, I'm not up here to tell you, name it and claim it. I'm not up here to tell you if you'll be obedient. You'll have a cattle on a thousand hills. We don't believe that kind of theology. In fact, I would preface all of this by telling you the best and faithful, the best and faithful, most faithful testimony is to stand and say, I've been obedient to God. Not out of expecting anything out of it. I've just been obedient. We want obedience, don't we? If you're a parent here and you've got some children, uh, actually, all you need is one. And then you'll just say, all I want is my children to be obedient. Just want them to be obedient. Want them to be obedient to me, and then I want them to be obedient to the Lord. The Bible records what happens after this spectacular moment of faith. Here's what the Bible says, verse 15. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven. And said, by myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and you have not withheld your son, your only son. Can you imagine the, the, the stress this must have put on Abraham? He's imagining this is the heir. This is the one that's going to bring this kingdomhood of, of, of heirs that are as countless as the stars in the sky. He says, I'll surely bless you. I will Surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore and your uh, and your offspring shall possess it. The, uh, and your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies and in your offspring shall all the enemy uh, nations of the earth, excuse me, be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So the Bible says. He says, I'm going to bless you, Abraham, because you have obeyed my voice. Now, here's what some of you are thinking. I've never heard the voice of God. No, but you can every single morning. 66 books. God as the author, the Holy Spirit, inspired word of God, speaks to us. Are you obeying the call of God in your life? Are you obeying the word of God in your life? We know what Jesus wants us to do. In fact, in John 10, he tells us the sheep, that's you, we hope, the sheep hear my voice and they know it's my voice and they follow me. Now, I'm not asking you to obey the Lord so that you can have, uh, you know, a cow on a thousand hills. I'm asking you to obey the Lord so that you can one day say, I've been faithful to the mission that God gave me. Are you obeying the word of God? Are you obeying the truth in your life? Are you obeying what he's called you to? Let me ask you a couple of questions this morning. I know it's getting warm. I'm going to talk quick. <coughs> Here's the first question. Have you put your faith in Jesus? Have you really put your faith in Jesus? Don't go through the motions this morning. Don't say, don't, you, don't cat, go through a, a, a catalog in your mind and think about it. Well, did I? What was this? Well, did I join the church? Was I baptized? I'm asking you, have you ever personally put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his saving message? See, Abraham was a man of faith. 
All of these in, in this roll call of faith in Hebrews 11, they were people of faith. They put their faith in Jesus. They put their faith in the hopeful God. They put their faith in the one that was coming. Have you done that? Again, it, it's not by accident that you're here. For whatever reason you're here this morning, maybe you're here to hear this question. Are you a person of faith? How about this? Is your faith spelled out in action? Do people see you and say, man, that brother, that sister, they're acting out their faith for the Lord Jesus Christ. I see them serving all the time, all kinds of capacities, all kinds of ways. They're doing what they can for the, for the, for the kingdom. Is your faith expressionable in action like Abraham? And then I just ask you this question. Are you being obedient? Are you obedient? Are you obedient to the call of God in your life? Are you obedient to whatever he's told you to do for the kingdom? You say, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. I can remember even, even a calling to preach and, and to pastor. How, how hard it was to say, here I am, Lord. Here I am. Take my life, Lord. Lead me. Do whatever you want to do with my life. There's been moments in my life I've, I've said, Lord, you really want me to do that? You really want me to go there? Here I am, Lord. Here I am. And it's carried me to some of the darkest places I've felt in the world. The, the true wilderness. But friends, you've got to be obedient to what God calls you to do. And here's the thing. Hear, hear, this, hear this. He'll even call you to hard things. We all think that it's a yellow brick road. It's rainbows and unicorns. This wasn't a life of rainbows and unicorns. He calls a man to leave his home. And listen, through his life, he builds these monumental moments of faith. Through all of these things. To get him to this pivotal and hard moment. So that he would say, here I am, Lord. You test me again, and you'll find out I'm a man of faith. In a minute, we're going to stand. We're going to sing. Shockingly, we're going to sing, I surrender all. Have you really surrendered all? You really surrendered all of your life. Say, here I am, Lord. Take my life. Take my possessions. Take everything that's, that's my, that I think is mine, and it's yours, Lord. Leave me, Lord. Call me, Lord. Shape me, change me, that I might be yours. Let's stand together and we'll pray. Father, it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we pray. If you call, we'll answer. We'll say, here I am. Send me, Lord. Send me whether it's across the street or across the seas. Send me to different nations and send me to my neighbors. Lord, let me say, what I have isn't mine, it's yours. It's for your kingdom and your glory and your power and your honor and your dominion. Father, I'd imagine there's some today struggling with their faith. They're not believers. Might today, before they leave this campus, surrender their life to you. Father, others who are saying, I'm a man of faith, I'm a woman of faith, but my life has no action. Call them to action. Call them to, to, to faith with feet. And then, Lord, some that are just struggling to obey, let them surrender all and be obedient to your word, to your voice, to your calling. We pray this in Jesus' name.